bacteria, which cause some of our most common illnesses, our single cell organisms. There are seven major categories or groups of bacteria, which are divided by shape and cell wall. When looking inside a bacterium, the simplicity of the cell is evident. The cell contains DNA, ribosome, and other basic proteins, and this simplicity increases susceptibility to UV light. UV-induced DNA damage can affect how proteins and enzymes are produced, having lethal effects. However, taking a look back inside the cell, UV light can also cause sublethal damage. UV light can increase reactive oxygen species production, which can react with the cell wall. The cell wall and other components of the cell can become severely damaged, halting cell growth and increasing immune response. A scrape or cut in the skin represents a pathway for pathogens to enter the body. As the pathogen colonizes, the first response unit of the immune system, the innate system, is activated. We possess specialized proteins that identify unique pathogen sequences, like the complement system. The complement system, by activating a sequence of proteins, differentiates the pathogen from host cells. Once the complement system tags the pathogen, professional phagocytites, like dendrites, can begin attacking. Phagocytes digest the pathogen and can activate the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system is much more specific, utilizing specialized molecules known as antibodies. Mm -hmm. Antibodies bind to specific antigens, which are molecular components produced by or found on the pathogen. The binding of an antigen can activate these specialized immune cells to release antibodies specific to the pathogen. They can also produce MHC receptors that bind with and activate other immune cells, like T cells. Activated T cells further the advance by destroying the pathogen, even destroying infected host cells. Released antibodies can also recognize and bind to antigens on the surface of pathogen and bind to that structure, marking it for breakdown. The immune system is an important defense against pathogens, preserving the integrity of the body. The circulatory system is a wonderfully complicated system. It is responsible for sustaining our cells, facilitating cell-cell communication, and supporting our immune system's effort to fight infection. However, there are times when the circulatory system is plagued with an infectious disease. uncontrolled infection can have serious effects on the body. It can result in organ failure and even death. Fortunately, the immune system has a multi-layered defense mechanism. One layer includes the release of antibodies, with some cells producing 5,000 per second. 
antibodies navigate throughout the entire circulatory system, marking foreign pathogens. Once marked, specialized immune cells can begin to engulf and destroy the pathogen. At times, however, the body needs the support from antibiotics to quell infection. However, there are strains resistant to some of our most potent antibiotics. Resistant pathogens are able to freely multiply, having critical effects on the body. The circulatory system, although responsible for facilitating complex biochemical pathways, possesses a basic design. The heart, as it pumps, generates enough pressure to push blood through an immense web of vessels. When looking inside a major vessel, we can see the circulatory system moves with great purpose. Larger or major vessels feed smaller tributaries, which in turn feeds the smaller capillary vessels. Within the capillary bed, we see the volume reduces to such a degree, red blood cells navigate these vessels in single file. Along the tightly confined capillary system, red blood cells and local tissue participate in gas exchange. Red blood cells deliver oxygen to local tissues, while the tissue releases carbon dioxide. The exchange is critical for proper metabolism as oxygen promotes the pathways to break down macromolecules a process resulting in carbon dioxide production. However, for this exchange to be possible, the red blood cell must endure immense pressure and strain. The ability to endure such an arduous path stems from the red blood cell's elasticity. The red blood cell is squeezed as it navigates the capillary system and frequently collides with the endothelial walls of the vessel. In a healthy state, the red blood cell has the capability to handle the level of deformation required, which allows it to continue to participate in the all-important gas exchange. However, with age or a specific disease, the circulatory system may become impaired. As a result, red blood cells may lose their elasticity, which hampers their deformability. Red blood cells can become more rigid and the sheer pressure and forces become too great a burden to bear. As a result, the cell can rupture. A healthy circulatory system is understandably vital for overall tissue health, and green light stimulation has been shown in studies to help the circulatory system. Green light irradiation has been shown to improve the elastic properties of red blood cells. In a diseased state or the result of aging, the potential therapeutic ability of green light irradiation may help restore proper red blood cell function. With improved red blood cell function, gas exchange may improve and in turn both cell and tissue function 